Hey, so today we're working on a 2012 Volkswagen Jetta, a 2.5 liter. A customer uh, has taken it to a shop. They have said the AC compressor uh, is no good. So we're going to be replacing the AC compressor, uh, doing the expansion valve. We're also going to be doing the condenser on this vehicle. Uh, so the first thing we're going to have to do uh, to get to the condenser, we're going to have to remove the bumper assembly. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the grill uh, and then proceed to the bumper and headlights. All right, so we're going to remove uh, these four torques. It's a T25. All right, so now we have our four bolts uh, removed. Now this does clip in right at the bumper line. That would be the next place that it holds it in. Uh, so what we want to do is we just want to push down on the bumper and this will release our tabs as we pull it out. Maybe. How'd I do that? Okay, there, we felt one release. Just being very careful not to break it. There we go. There it is. Okay, so you can see these tabs are what we were pushing down and these tabs locked into this groove. So as we pushed it down, we widened the groove. So that's how we got, we got that off. All right, so we wanna remove uh, these bolts. You can see our bumper line and our fender. Uh, so we wanna remove the bolts that are lower. Uh, so we have, I believe, five of them there. We wanna do it on this side. We wanna do it also on the passenger side. All right, so we're gonna remove, uh, this is the splash shield. Uh, so we have a couple of four bolts on this side, uh, same here. It's clipped in the front, uh, so we're gonna pull this down. This is just the splash shield. Okay, so now, we're going to remove the lower bumper bolts. So we got a few just around the perimeter here. Okay, so all the bolts that we have removed are all the T25s. So everything we have just done, uh, you know, this is all a group of the same set of bolts. All right, so now we have all of the bottom and the sides loose. Uh, so we have three more bolts up top here. Uh, that should give us our bumper uh, free from the car. All right, so we have the bumper pretty loose. Right here, we have some clips held in. Same on this side. All right.
right. And we have our bumper removed. All right, so now we want to remove these shields here, these windshields. Uh, so I just want to release this wire here. Now these have little tabs that we push down. All right, so that's the one. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so removing the condenser, uh, according to the book, we will have to remove the crash plate. And that's how the manual says to take it off. What we're going to try to do, uh, there is some alignment dowels and some specialty tools for this. We're going to try not to disturb any of this. We have little access holes here and here. The same on the other side. That's the mount for the condenser. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove the two lines. Now we've already had the car at a shop. We've already had the system evacuated. So we don't have any pressure because uh, if not there's going to be some serious pressure uh, that comes out of there. Cold uh, could burn you from being so cold and not good for the atmosphere. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove these two. We're going to remove these two bolts and we're going to hope that the condenser will be able to slide down out of here and not have to remove the inner core support here, the crash uh, impactor. Okay, so we want to remove our two AC lines there going to the condenser. This is a T45. So now we're going to try to loosen. You can see the tabs coming off of the side of the condenser behind this plate. Okay, so this, this core here is also part of the headlight. All of our hood weight is also on this piece. So we couldn't finagle, but we know we need to support the hood another way uh, to go any further here. Being that this core support uh, plastic is what we want to get to, we started loosening it. We have our hood, everything's secured. So we're going to remove the headlight. Uh, this side, the other side, this will free up the center here. So we got a couple three bolts on top. Now we do have some adjuster bolts, one here and one in the back. So. We definitely want to make sure we don't change any adjustment. So we'll start with this upper bracket. Okay, so the adjusters are going to have some inserts that have nuts on them. Uh, those nuts uh, have a threaded side to the back, so that adjusts the height the angles of everything. So as long as we don't move, as long as we don't move that insert and just remove the bolt, the headlights will go in with the same uh, projection they have now. All right, so we still have the connectors hooked up. Ooh, I cannot. Get that plug out. Ha. Ha. I don't know 
know if I can get the headlight there though. I can't even unplug it. All right, so we loosen this one headlight. We're just gonna try to loosen this up a little bit, see how much we have to take apart. Maybe we have to go all the way. Maybe not. So we got two bolts that we were working on when we watched it lower. Oh yeah, I feel everything starting to come free there. So that holds everything. Wow. All right, so the connector on this light has a tab to push in. It is extremely hard to push in. So I'm using a screwdriver uh, to help with that. So what I did, here's the connector. So this, but this is the button to push to release it. It's extremely hard. With a screwdriver, I just did this. You'll hear it click, and uh, it will just pop right off. All right, so I'm going to just remove this piece here. All right, so we still haven't given up on beating the book time. Book time is take whole radiator out, whole assembly out. Really, we're only hung up by the corners here. Uh, so I have some jack stands and a two by four secured with a bungee cord. Now this will keep the radiator falling out, you know what I mean, if we do something wrong or, or whatever, just to keep any problems from happening. So what we're going to do is the radiator is held in by this is one screw. Uh, there is another one. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to loosen the radiator up inside the mount so we can get enough room. Uh, maybe we can jiggle the condenser over to one side and be able to pull it out. Uh, we're still on the route of taking it out. so. With loosening those two up, we were able to push the condenser over uh, with the radiator slightly backwards from loosening those bolts. Now we have one side free. Uh, so we can pull it a little bit further to get the other side. All right, and we're able to slip the condenser out. So you can see all the debris. This is the lower half of the bumper where the airflow comes. You can see definitely the difference and all the debris that we have. So we'll blow all this stuff out. This is going to stop airflow and cooling from happening. All right, so here we have our new condenser we got from Auto Parts Direct to you. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put them together. Make sure all our mounting tabs, our lines. This is our dryer. So what we're going to do, I believe this is going to have a dryer already in it. But 
We have an AC kit that came with a dryer. Uh, we're just gonna make sure. It's not, not a big deal just to take these two bolts here and one here, and this tube will be the, where the dryer's at. Okay, it is a full, fully contained piece. So it is All right. So I put that back pretty quick together. Uh, we don't want any moisture inside of our dryer. Uh, that is the function inside the AC, so we don't want to expose it. We're in Florida, so it's pretty high humidity. Things like that happen pretty fast. If we were just replacing, we would get something like this. And we would be installing the new one as so like we just did for that. So if we were just uh, servicing the condenser, this is what we would be using. This comes with the AC kit, uh, but since we got the condenser, uh, it also has it on there. And we'll go ahead and put our guard back on. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four. We have five, so four corners in the middle. I'm really not a fan of pushing things through the fins. So we're going to try to do the same thing we did before where we slid it in and, a, and back. So I believe we went in this way. And then back, being very, very careful. All right, so we're in. We're gonna go ahead and just set it. So now we wanna, we wanna fasten the radiator back. Which were these two outer bolts. and get the, these side bolts in. These are, this is what actually holds everything up. All right, so with some of this stuff, when you're trying to put it back in the same alignment, you can tell where the bolt was. See how we, we can see this line right here. So we know the bolt was there, so we know we need to pull. So we can line things back up, uh, try to get them as close as they were before we disturbed them. That way all of our seam lines and everything end up being the same. All right, so now we want to uh, do our condenser which was our four bolts through these holes. There's another condenser's in. You go ahead and move our little 
rig there. All right, so those will be the line connections that we're going to do. All right, so now we're going to uh, remove the belts. Uh, this pulley has two belts on it, the AC compressor. So here's the tensioner for this one. All right, so that one's off. Now we'll go to the top, and we'll be doing this one up here. We can reach better from the top to remove the other belt. All right, so here we have the other belt. Uh, there's the tensioner for that one, so we'll go ahead and loosen that one to take the bolt off. Oh, whoops, wrong way. So when you do the tensioners, we're going to make sure that they do spring back if they stick in position, they are no good. Uh, so they should always spring back. All right. Now we'll go back under the car to remove the compressor. All right, so here we are at the compressor. Uh, the compressor is mounted with three bolts. Uh, one here on the top and then one on the side here. And this is the plug for the coil back here. Go ahead and unplug it. Oh, man. These connectors are pretty hard. Pretty tricky connector there. Okay, so we got the bolts on the top. I will go ahead and loosen all three of the compressor bolts. Compressor is going to be hanging. Uh, we'll have some bungee cords uh, to hold it uh, so we can get to the top lines. So we'll go ahead and remove those three mounting bolts now. There is an alignment dowel on there. That alignment dowel is pretty stuck. All right, here we go. Okay, here's that corroded pin. That was what we were just fighting just then. So we were very careful. See, we were hitting on the compressor. This is cast. It did, that's why we didn't, the aluminum cast aluminum, very soft, so we stayed hitting compressors, what we're replacing. We do not want to damage the line, uh, but there is what held us back right there. And so we'll go ahead and remove our line. 
the other side here. A little easier, that one's not corroded like that one was. Okay, so the compressor locked up was, was the failure or not cycling the clutch. Something there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the oil out of the old compressor. One is we're gonna see if it's dirty. If the oil is dirty, then we're gonna have to do a flush that the compressor has come apart internally. Uh, and two, we just wanna see what level of fluid we had. That's, there we go. All right, so we should probably have had four or six ounces coming out of that. Barely got a little over an ounce. That would indicate that we have a leak in the system and that's how we lost our oil. It is clean. So we, we're assuming the compressor internals didn't come apart. Uh, we could have probably had a leak somewhere on the seal here or something like that. All right, so here we've had the compressor draining. We got a little bit more out of it. We should have had about four ounces. We were not there. That's what we're gonna do now. Here's our new compressor from Auto Parts Direct U. We wanna make sure that they do look the same. All right, and the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna remove this. We're going to pour the oil out of this, see what we have. This compressor here states that it needs 150 milliliters. As we pulled out of this one, we should add 110 cc's. But we know the volume was really low on that one, so. All right, so this compressor did not have a sticker on it that said it was full of oil. So usually they have a big green sticker over top of the lines that tell you that the, it is adjusted correctly. This one did not have that. Uh, so we're going to uh, just drain it and then add the correct amount to it. All right, so the requirement about four ounces, comes out to be about 116 milliliters. The compressor said 150 uh, for this brand. We're pretty close, about a half ounce or so, a little more than that. Okay, all right, so we just put in 116 milliliters, uh, which would be our four ounces uh, as the service manual. And it was still kind of draining. We we're almost there. We should be very close to what we need to be. So the kit also comes with some O-rings. Uh, so we want to go ahead and replace all of our O-rings. All right, so when we were wrestling the compressor down, 
uh, some little things fell out. I just want to make note. These are alignment dowels. Uh, so they go into the bolt insert, and this is what aligns it. There's one on the top. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Uh, so this will what keeps uh, it in line, so it is correct for the belt. So I just want to make sure they didn't stick in the old compressor. Uh, the new one does not come with them. Uh, so I just want to make sure that they didn't fall on the ground, roll around, whatever, lost them. Uh, you definitely need that. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put the compressor in. All right. All right, so here we'll try to bolt this up and uh, we'll go for the line as an after. All right, so we have our bolts finger tight. And now we're gonna go ahead and put that line and put that line in. If it does have an alignment dowel. Okay, now the bolt. Okay, and for tightening these, we have a three foot long extension. We may have to put the swivel on the end of it with the Torx, uh, but we'll be tightening the lines from up top uh, with our long extension. So we showed you one way. The book way is how we did it coming out. All except I had a second hand. If I didn't have a second hand, I would have to make some kind of a metal hook ring or a bungee, something to be my third hand. Then we have our connection on the back of the compressor. Okay. So we'll go ahead and install these lines here. So we want to do the same thing. We want to take our O-rings off, match them up. Those lines were preformed there, so if you feel like you're twisting that line and it does not want to just fall into place, chances are you got them in the wrong spot. All right, so our lines are installed. The orifice will be the next one. Expansion valve. All right, so on the firewall, see we're, we're looking at it from underneath the vehicle now. Now you can do this from above. Uh, you will be laying on the engine with your hands wrapped around it. Uh, but the object is we're trying to get this block right here. So we have our two AC lines with our Torx bits. Uh, and then we have our expansion block behind it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and loosen these lines. That'll expose two more bolts uh, that holds that in.
Give me a little leverage. Alright, so we got one. We got a little mount over here. I think I'm gonna loosen up. I use the screwdriver just as leverage to rock it back and forth. Okay. All right, so the expansion valve has two four millimeter bolts right in the center. We'll go ahead and loosen those two up. Okay, so now we have our Allen bolts out. We should be able to just pull the block right off. A little bit of wiggling. All right. All right, so there's our expansion block. Our two bolts are right inside here. Uh, and this is what meters, uh, this is what actually makes the orifice to get the temperature change uh, with the Freon. All right, so that mounted to the uh, evaporator core. Uh, so there is two O-rings on each side of those lines. We want to go ahead and peel those out of there. We want to match them up, so that was this is the top one, uh, and there's a bottom one. And the bottom one, and they are different sizes. So now we just want to match those O-rings, lube them, put them on. And we can reinstall the block, and then the same thing with the lines bolting to that. We'll have O-rings there too. Okay, so here we have our new expansion block from Auto Parts Direct to you. We'll go ahead and open it up. Now, we'll go ahead and put a little lube so we can mount it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mount in this way, and our two bolts are going to go through here. So we'll go ahead and put some lube on this back side here so that the new O-rings and everything seats up nice. So we're doing both lines, you know, hand tight. It's drawing itself in, so we're going back and forth. So it evenly pulls on. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and tighten it up for the final time. So just like on the other side, uh, this side is also going to have O-rings. So we'll go ahead and peel our O-rings off and match them up. Jeez, a little screwdriver. Unless you have fingernails, a little screwdriver, the best trick. All right, so we had two different sizes. We had the, the bigger line, I had the bigger O-ring. Oh, let me peel that bottom O-ring back off. It doesn't look as tight does not okay so the top one looks good we'll go ahead and pop it in into place just so just so it get it sealed up but this bottom one not sure I like 
how loose that is. So when that goes in, that's gonna pinch. I thought for sure I matched it up, but let's take another look at that. Go ahead and put our lines back on. Put our bolts back in. And then retighten. I always put the bolts in as far as I can go by hand. Uh, it just ensures that I'm not going to strip anything and everything lines up and pulls in correctly. Not forcing anything, it's fitting as it should. All right, so go ahead and realign our belts. Now we'll go ahead and the other side. Okay. Okay, so there we have our have our belts. We want to make sure that they are routed correctly. Everything is in place. All right. Okay. So with the headlight removed, we can get both of these top bolts for the lines on the compressor. So we just tightened the one. We went back, we checked the other one, it's tight. No swivel on this one. Now, if I would have had a swivel down here, I could have had a longer extension and, and been out here. How about being the headlight was out, we were able to, uh, to get in there and get it done. So here we have our airflow panels. Now to know which side they go on, one side's cut out for the condenser line. So we know this one's on this side. So go ahead and put this one on. We were mounted like this. And then we just clip right back into those spot there. We'll go ahead and tuck our wire back into the, uh, the mount. I'll do the other side. So we'll go ahead and put our headlight back on. Plug our plug up first. So we had our upper bolts. All right, so the headlights have a lot of movement, uh, adjustability. So what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna do this top mount. This top mount's gonna show us exactly where we unbolted it. So we're gonna line we're gonna line these up and tighten it in the same spot it was. So we have that mount in the same spot, and then these are where the adjusters were, so we'll go ahead and tighten these back down. All 
And I'll do the same thing for the other headlight. I'm going to put our bumper back on. I'll go ahead and set it on. We'll secure it uh, with these three bolts and up front here to hold it. Okay, so there's a little bit of clip action here. So there's these little tabs fit down in this groove to slide down. So, here's one, there's two. Make sure you can Now we'll go ahead and do the fenders and put our belly pan on uh, and then we'll go for the grill after that. that side all bolted and everything looks good our body lines our headlight all of our all of our lines look good so we'll go ahead and do the other side now Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the grill on. We're going to go ahead and uh, put the bottom in first. That was the clip that we had. So we we'll end up our bolts are lined up. Same here. Line the bolts back up to the same pattern. That'll get us back to where we were on the hood. Alright, so now that we got everything back together, uh, the last thing uh, just to make sure that everything is and to get the moisture, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the vacuum pump on it. We're going to leave it for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, that will pull all of the moisture out of the system to make it more efficient. Uh, it will also tell us if we have any leaks. Uh, being, under, being under vacuum is a lot um, is more intense than being under pressure for the system. Uh, so if it's going to leak, that'll be the time that it'll leak. So this is all stuff that's uh, you know, pretty high end, uh, vacuum compressor, stuff like that. So this is something, uh, once you've completed this step, it would be now would be the time to take it to a shop and have it vacuumed down and then have a certified you know, handle of Freon uh, shoot you some, uh, uh, fill the system up. This will be stamped on the bottom side of the hood. Uh, but that would be for the tech that is uh, going to uh, charge your system. All right, so if you are going to be uh, charging your system uh, with Freon, once you get to that point, uh, there is a procedure by Volkswagen for a brand new compressor startup. 
Uh, basically, you're starting the vehicle up without the compressor on. You're not engaging the AC. You're turning on the high uh, fan. You're letting the car idle uh, for two minutes. Then you are turning the car off. Then upon restarting the car, then you can cycle your AC. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they have it in like that. Um, there is a lot of modules on the car, so everything could be checking in prior to engaging the compressor. Um, but that is the procedure that they have uh, for breaking in a brand new compressor. So starting the vehicle up, AC off, put the system on high vent uh, so it's blowing high, uh, running for two minutes, shut the car off, turn the car back on, then you can start the compressor. You can engage the cold air. Uh, and that is some cycling for a new compressor that is as per the Volkswagen manual. Okay, so here we have the vacuum pump hooked up. Uh, so we have our, our valves open, so our system is connected from the high and low side, the red and the blue. The yellow line goes to our vacuum pump. So what we're going to do is we have them open, we're going to turn the vacuum pump on. So we're going to do a, a quick check because we should have this on for 45 minutes. We don't want to put it on for 45 minutes, unplug it find out we have a leak, have to start all over. So we'll go ahead and drop. So we're pulling 30 inches. So we've already pulled the vacuum. We're going to go ahead and we're going to close the valves. We're going to turn our pump back off. We're going to watch, we're going to watch our gauges. So we're isolated now. Uh, we're watching the system. So just sit here and watch it for about 10 seconds or so. We should not see any movement of that. So we have pinned the vacuum in the system. That's telling us that all of our O-rings, all of our components are all up to par. So we're, we're kind of ensuring ourselves that we have completed the job uh, correctly. Everything has uh, gone in correctly. So we'll go ahead, we'll open the system back up. We'll turn the vacuum back on so you can see it just flickered. Now we go back to uh, putting on a vacuum. Now this is going to sit for about 45 minutes uh, to get all the moisture out of the system uh, before we charge the system.